Hi, welcome back to Elite Literary Book Group. I'm Rachel Beck, and I'm going to uh, continue talking about To Kill a Mockingbird today. I'm not going to do the whole book, but if you're interested in taking one of my courses, it's offered on Udemy. And so far I've done The Great Gatsby and Their Eyes Are Watching God, and I just finished Catcher in the Rye. So Catcher in the Rye is really controversial. You should look at that. Um, but anyways, you know, authors are social critics, and so part of your job in analyzing is to see what the author is criticizing in terms of the society and social institutions. So I think it's uh, important that she starts with education to lead up to, you know, the, the climax of the book. And I know it takes students a little while to get into this book because there's so much background going on, but she's really trying to show you this is a coming of age story. And things with coming of age, they're not like, I think I, I know I've said this before, but it's, it's a kind of a series of disappointments. You can look at that as, as a way of growing up. So people who very old and they still act childish, they probably just didn't have enough disappointments in their life and um, they haven't suffered. Suffering equals maturity. <laughs> so anyways, um, she, she gets there, she's excited to go because there's nothing else to do and she, the first thing that happens is she gets in trouble because she already knows how to read. And the teacher says, you, your father couldn't have taught you because he doesn't know how. And so that in itself kind of shows you the small-minded, even in education, um, it's, it's kind of underlining the problem. Because when you look at the society and you then look at the court scene, who makes up the court? The people, the town people do. And um, even though she's supposed to be an educator, she also misses the forest for the trees. And she's been taught by the Dewey Decimal System, I guess, and that's just the way it is. So uh, what I think is, well, I, I really wish it, they would do a classroom scene. I won't read it to you, but I still love reading that uh, part where Burris Ewell goes off on the teacher. And notice that Burris Ewell, first of all, the Ewells are the ones, um, Mayella Ewell will be the one that accuses Tom Robinson of rape. This is her brother. And you notice that he's the poorest one in the class and therefore he is the meanest one. And I think that's important because I, it, she kind of shows a little bit of sympathy for that family. Uh, the father's an alcoholic, the kids are kind of left to their own devices of whatever that means, just they have to fend for themselves mostly. So when she tells Atticus about it, this is kind of the first conversation you get from Atticus to see his real character. And, it, you know, he's always kind of above everyone else, but at the same time, he's the most humble. And even though he's probably far more educated than the teacher, he doesn't get mad and, and call up the teacher and say, like I would do, oh, you're an idiot. <laughs> you know, she's just move her to another grade. Um, but what he does is he tries to, to get Scout to, to put herself in, in the teacher's shoes and to try to understand people by walking around in their skin. And, you know, he even makes a comment about you know, I wouldn't want her to be mad at me, so you better not tell her that we're reading together. And I think that just shows a great amount of humility that, that Atticus shows. Like, like I've said before, he's, he's not just a, a character that shows integrity, he shows maturity. And um, she, she asked him about, they get into a conversation about law because she suggests she doesn't really need to go to school. And he says, it's against the law. And she says, well, what about the Ewells? They don't go to school. And he says, that's, that's true. And they also are allowed to hunt out of season. And she says, that's not right. 
And he says that, in, but when a man spends his relief checks on green whiskey, his children have a way of crying from hunger pains. I don't know of any landowner around here who would begrudge those children from getting um, any game their father can hit. So you start to see that things, even the law, isn't quite black and white as, as people may perceive it, that there are sometimes some, some exceptions. And trying to explain this to a child um, is, is part of what Harper Lee is, is really getting at towards the end, when, when it all kind of comes together with Boo Radley and, and a lot of other misconceptions. Um, another character that comes up is Maudie. And Maudie's is interesting because she's that lady that, um, you know, is, is not married and uh, probably doesn't attend church regularly and she doesn't do what she's supposed to do according to the town. And so they think there's got to be something wrong with her because she's kind of a nonconformist. And she stays in her garden and she makes a comment about um, a foot washing Baptist, which I don't hear that a whole lot. There may be people but that still are, but this is this is a long time ago, so it's probably not the same way. But they're supposedly very strict. And um, she says anything fun to them is, is like a sin, which sounds like Puritans. And so they even said that her, her flowers and and she's going to go to hell, even her flowers. If you think about what she's doing now, gardening, she is sort of in the presence of God. I mean, she's, she's in the soil. She's, uh, she has to have a, a certain amount of respect for, for creation and life. And um, she, has, she also mentions that they think that just women are sin. But the um, foot washing Baptist is, is what he says that the Radley family, Mr. Radley is. And so you notice that uh, his response to his son, you know, committing some mischief is to just lock him up and throw away the key, basically, just to keep him out of society. That's the answer. So, One um, other point I want to make about the um, the foot washing Baptist taking the Bible literally. I talk a lot more in my other classes um, with you know more difficult books like The Great Gatsby and even Their Eyes Are Watching God uh, about sola scriptura which is scripture alone and the the problem with sola scriptura is is this problem and, and like I said before she's She's critiquing institutions. So first we, we have education, okay? So there's something wrong with that. And now there's something wrong with religion. And it's not that you can't take them literally, it's just that people take scriptures out of context. So if you try to argue a case, if you're a Christian and you're trying to argue just scripture, somebody else can come along and take scripture and do a rebuttal because there's plenty of things that they could take out of context and say, well, what about that? I'm, that was, what about when Jesus overturned that table? There's not a whole lot of things you can say bad about Jesus, but they, people will, usually they go to the Old Testament and a lot of times Christians will go to the Old Testament too, especially nowadays. But, um, you know, they're, they're, they're simply taking it out of context and that's part of the problem when people use scripture to justify what they want to do. And let's think about the times. I mean, the, the Ku Klux Klan at this time, uh, many of them were part of the Southern Baptist Church. And they found some scripture to justify what they were doing. So I think it's, a, it's kind of a dangerous thing to just rely on scripture alone but if you're interested in that topic I talk a lot more about it and um, Harold Bloom's idea of the American religion in its 
um, kind of making it our own. It has a lot to do with our views of democracy and, and things like that too. Um, so to go back to Maudie though and what she's saying, you could have a pretty good uh, conversation about double standards here with this uh, women being a sin. I, I remember I mentioned this as a, a warm-up question or something and another teacher said that it's not in the book. And I said, yeah, it is. It's, I can show you the page. And she's like, didn't want to see it. Fake news. But anyways, um, it is here. It says, thank you, ma'am. Thing is, fish washing Baptists think women are a sin by definition. So what would make women a sin? It, it's kind of strange to think about because if the only thing that you could probably come up with is that they are a, a temptation. But they're not, um, they're not the ones who have a problem with the temptation. That would be men. So, uh, it, you know, maybe it goes back to Eve you know, holding the apple and um, Adam giving in. But still, it's, it's, it's the way men kind of give in to that. That is the problem, not women. Um, um, so you start to see kind of double standards and this is also you know during a time when um, girls were expected to act like little ladies and who scout is is um, kind of against that she doesn't she I mean you could play much easier in, in overalls I mean she's very practical and she um, she has a brother that she plays with and then Dill. Oh, and I haven't even got to Dill yet, but um, that'll be another time. But at any rate, uh, this this would have been nice at the time for, for women to read because there wasn't a lot of characters out there like Scout. And especially giving her point of view. So another thing about Maudie, though, as as you can see, is that she, she treats the kids like they are adults. She doesn't talk down to them. Um, they can come to her and she kind of later on becomes like a confidant to Scout. She can talk to her and she's kind of another one just like Calpurnia is a, a bit of a mother figure because Scout's mother dies. Uh, there's a joke that she brings up that the, her Uncle Jack would call across and, and ask Maudie to marry him. And I remember reading an article, and it's been a while back and I don't, I don't have it, but I, I remember reading that it, it was actually the father who would do this and that there was this lady that was like Maudie. And she always said no, <laughs> but um, it's kind of sad. But anyways, Maudie gets criticized uh, because she doesn't, like everyone else, just fit in. The community and she doesn't care she doesn't want to even when the court case comes along and everybody in town is going Maddie's the one that stays back and she doesn't want to watch this and she thinks she knows already what she's going to see so next time I'll just talk about Dill uh, who is actually Truman Capote he's the only one that Harper Lee says is is an actual real character but um, I think there was probably a lot more that she was writing from her life than, than what she wanted to say. So anyhow, I'll leave it there. All right, thanks.